Welcome to Las Vegas and the Predator Pro Billiard Series brings you the Las Vegas Open. We are at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino, the Q Sports International's Expo, the greatest pool experience in the world, and this is a second round match we're about to view between Major Payne McBride and Chang Zhong Lin from Chinese Taipei. The American Junior will be facing this experienced, top level, world class player in two races to four of ten ball. Uh, this is George Teichai in the booth with Eric Holifson, and we'll bring you a live action right from Las Vegas in the ballroom here. It's a pleasure to be with you guys again. All you pool players and pool, uh, pool aficionados from all over the world, it's great to have you. Uh, this is being played on the Apex Predator tables with the Arcadia cloth, the Arena lights. Uh, Payne McBride just defeated Kurt Kobayashi in his first match uh, to face Chang Zhong Lin, who we see on your screen there. And... Um, Kurt is a 673 Fargo from Hawaii, a good player, and this 17-year-old young man uh, won both sets uh, to get him to this uh, match with Mr. Chang here. Mr. Chang is one of the top-level players and has been in the world for years. Him and Shane go neck and neck for all you Americans out there and all you Asians out there. Uh, they are the top of the line as far as... Uh, Pool predators go. We have John Lin coming in as a seated player. There was 32 players seated in this 96 player field. They'll be getting down to a fi uh, final 32 single knockout stage within a day here. Looks like a bit of controversy on the lag. Not quite sure. Hmm. He's looking for his interpreter. He doesn't speak. Uh, his English is not very good, so he so usually he has. How he was placing the cue ball to go up to lag, and I think he's the refs oh, that he defaulted the lag. This is something that came up in Austria with with the new international refs instead of the American refs that we're having. They are very particular. If a part of the cue ball passes the head string, it's a foul. I remember that. And they and they lose the lag. So the light goes automatically to uh, to the other player. Well, John Lin's not having it, and uh, I you know, I, I mean, there is a bit of a language barrier here, so I mm -hmm. think he needs a bit of interpretation. But you know, and I'll I'll say this as a side note: in, in these situations, if you're not quite happy with how how things are being ref, then you know, this is, this is a high level tournament, of course, right? These mm -hmm. refs know what they're doing, and they're and they're making the proper calls. But at the same time, there's times when you have to stand up for yourself, and I, I, don't, I don't mind him, you know, taking an extra second to question what has yeah. happened here. Totally agree with that. Uh, one of the things about the, I, I think here the referee should uh, let them know before they lag that the ball has to be completely behind the line. Mm -hmm. Some of these players may not be aware of that rule, that if just a piece of the ball hangs over, uh, it's, it, it, it's illegal. It was either in that or how he was placing it up to the line. We couldn't quite see. Mm -hmm. That's something you expect to happen. Here. I actually like to lag off the rail. I don't like to be right up there in front. Yeah, he's going to go for a secondary opinion here. Yeah. So, controversy here at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino uh, regarding the lag. I think he's looking for, for a way to communicate. Pain over there just saying... Just let me lag. Let me break first, will you? Payne just coming off uh, a win at the yeah. first Predator Junior Series. They're going to be starting this year. It's going to be an eight-event two, eight, uh, event tour. It's going to be great for all American junior players. Yeah, we were talking about that prior to this. Uh, we were Actually, we were in Puerto Rico when Ra Hanna met with... Uh, uh, Kareem Balaj, the CEO of Predator, and they're putting that together. The Junior American Series is presented by Predator with their ace stops with a big final in uh, November. They have five divisions, and uh, it, this really gives the juniors a great opportunity to improve and develop their game in tournament conditions. Uh, Something that's been a little bit lacking in the past for American junior players, and I think it's, it's showing, uh, you know, Europe kind of taking over 
the junior scene a little bit, but we're, we're seeing a resurgence of American junior players, and it's good news for American uh, for American pool going forward. Uh, yeah, uh, for instance, the, the Payne, in fact, was part of the contingent of 17 American juniors that went over to Austria for the World Junior Championships. And uh, he actually he did okay. I was talking to him about that earlier. He says, well, as long as I beat Jerry Tape, I, I did all right. <laughs> but uh, Adrian Prasad uh, from the Sacramento area, is the one, he came runner up in the under 17. Sophia Mast, did you say she won or came runner up also? She was runner up. So we had two American players finishing very high. In, uh, in the Junior uh, World Championships. So I mean, that's Vince Rockefeller, uh, tournament director, event director actually, yeah, in, the, in the cap. Agreeing with the decision here. Uh, no, he's, he's, he's not taking it. I mean, I think the tournament well, director is Vincent Rochefort came over and said that probably the ref's decision is final and they're just going to leave it at that. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, just little instances like that uh, really upset the players. Yeah, not the way you want to start. Either. No, not at all. Because now that's, you're hot under the collar to start things off, and that interferes mentally with your game. But there are the rules, and uh, in reading them over, I did not see that specified in the rules. I'm sure it would be somewhere in the You would think so. Uh, but Austria was the first time I saw that foul called. I guess if you look on the bright side, it's something that you would want it, want it to happen in a second round match rather than the semifinal. Sure. Oh, of course. Game. Now he's aware of it. Yeah. But the importance of, of, of breaking first or winning the lag is the fact that uh, you will break first in the first set. Your opponent will break uh, first in the second set. But if it goes to a shootout, you now, the person that won the lag, have the right to pick the side and... Um, uh, uh, way, and go first or second. It's your choice. Right. So you have a choice that you wouldn't have otherwise. So it has more connotations than so just the first Exactly. Break. It's just more than just the first break. These are two races to four. If they are tied at the end of that, they will go to a shootout decider. And we'll explain more of that if we get to it. I think a lot of you that have been with the Pro Billiard Series are familiar with it. Uh, playing 10 ball. Early 10 balls are allowed uh, on the break. They don't count on the break, though. He's broken dry. And uh, Eric will break down the uh, action here. He's left on the right edge here. If he does hit the right edge of the one, the cue ball's traveling towards the eight. He might try to leave the cue ball between the eight and nine and leave the cue ball behind the nine. Tough shot, though. Can kick at it with a bunch of left spin. So is the push option as well. Looks like we might have enough to, uh, of it to just play the cue ball on the one ball opposite side rail. Good job. Don't hit the 10. Oh, oh, he's going to be OK. Yeah, avoided the 8 nice there, guys. Yeah. Didn't think he quite had enough of it to get that much of an angle going to the right. Definitely, definitely a good choice there. He's in a tough spot here. Yes, he is. Can he go inside the five and hit it? No. Can he is going to try to go inside the five. Can he hold that? A bunch of right spins. Got yeah. Slow speed to widen the angle as well. Oh, he cut it too thick. Oh, actually, he didn't catch it thick enough. Tough spot. There is a three foul rule in effect. So three consecutive fouls by the same player is the loss of game. Coming in as an underdog player here, like Payne is, you, you want to get off to a good start. I mean, things can, especially with a player like John Lynn or any strong world class yeah. player. And by underdog, uh, what Eric means there is that Payne is a 662 Fargo compared to the 826 that Chang Zhang Lin is. So uh, Chang is what I call the elite players, They're those players with Fargo rates of over 800. And uh, at 826, he's in the, probably the top 10. The top mm -hmm. really really raised the major title in the, in the past year, which is odd for him because he, he is a winner of over 10 major titles in his career. 
Yes, he, he has some. Well, COVID really took these guys out of play, mm -hmm. and now when they've come back, he's done well here in Vegas. Uh, he's represented well, but like you just said, he has not won uh, any of the big titles. He's finished well. Find a space between the seven nine. A lot of room to follow that ball, execute it nicely. That's fairly open from here. Well, the, the 37 year old Chang won the Jay Swanson Memorial last year. I uh, won it just finished up here at Griff's. Um, with John Mora winning it uh, just, I think, yesterday. And uh, he's got some high finishes, like we said. Uh, he was third in the International Open Bigfoot. He was fifth in Puerto Rico. The Chinese Taipei were second in the World Pool Championships. A lot of ninths and fifths finishes. Yeah, that's like an off year for him. Yeah, it is. You know, when he finishes near the quarterfinals, those are all strong finishes, but it was just kind of rare not to see him actually lift a singles title. But he'll be looking to improve that in 2024. Last year, last year he was third in the Michigan Open, ninth in the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships, 17th in the World Eight Ball Championships, which Shane Van Dorn won. No, that was 2023, this is 2022, sorry. Yeah, you have to go back to 2019 when uh, uh, you had some great results at the Derby City Classic in Houston at Bogies. It was uh, second in the US Open 8-ball. He was second in the world nine ball championships, 2019. So he's got quite the pedigree. Yeah, one of the best players in the world for the last mm -hmm. few years. You can see him getting through that rack pretty easily after a good safe on the first shot. women players uh, together in a major tournament, the World Ten Bowl Championships, a doubles tournament. Oh, you got a mixed doubles. That mixed doubles is exciting. Eight pairs uh, of the best men and women players in the world all matched up. For instance, you have Shane Van Boney and Allison Fisher, Alex Kazakis and Kelly Fisher, Feder Gorst and Christina Tkach. Joshua Filler, Pia Filler. Uh, Chang Zhong Ling is in that. He's playing with uh, Che Yu Chao. Uh, and then uh, Ko Ping Yi is playing with Wei Wei. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tyler. And Tyler. And his wife, Josh and his wife. So we have some ex that's, Yeah. Mm. By the way, everyone, that's on the 25th, and it'll be a one day tournament. Breaking the second rack. Oh, strong break. Do you like just banking that one ball down and putting the cue ball behind the four, or bringing the cue ball around to get underneath the ten? I think the seven eight is a wall you have to consider. I think with that, the cue ball to try to make the four. Might be trying to use the seven eight pin. Whoops. Ah, uh, that dreaded point. Uh, that upsets a lot of plans. Chance from the right here, with the two still tied up. 
Chicago is available on the five. The way the cue ball's lined, I think he's got a decent line to take a shot at that. I kind of like taking a shot at the 10 ball from there. You know, if you get positioned to the middle of the table, and I, I wouldn't mind playing the 10 ball to the, left, to the bottom of the corner. It's possible. Only 10s count, so yep. you have to consider. They are on the 30 second time clock. And he's going to be forced. Can he even see the two? No, he's going to have to jump at this one. Yeah. They're calling the five in. Not much chance to jump safe here, so he's pretty much all in. Stun on the cue ball to not he's the cue ball too much towards yeah. the left corner pocket. By the motions they just uh, we just saw, I believe he called the 10 ball in the corner. Well, going at the five, you might scratch off the ten in the corner. It's going to have to bring it down pretty quick. And you can't make the two ball jump is the, is the problem. Yeah. Well. You just called it. Yes, sure is. If you want to catch that uh, second row and then just nibble the ball and slice it over to the corner pocket. Instead, you catch it full underneath and the cue ball goes in. Nice open line for Chang here. You can call this almost, you can almost call this a leader rack. One, one ball leads to the next. It's the toughest thing is going to get to the eight ball, and if he keeps the cue ball where it's at now. You can either choose to be less great with the cue ball mm -hmm. here and take a little bit tougher shot on the eight, which looks like he's going to get enough draw to this cue ball here. Make sure he comes between the, the nine ten. Tables are, I believe this is one of the brand new tables with brand new cloth. Uh, they just took the cover off. It's the first, this first two racks played on this table. And uh, the cloth is pretty slick in these conditions. It rained here, so they could be a little bit uh, humid, a little bit wet. Yeah. 
And that's Scores 2-0, Mr. Chang, Chang Zhonglin, Chinese Taipei. Impressive, impressive player. And Payne McBride, Major Payne. Young man is working hard at improving his game. He will learn tremendously in this match. Exactly. Facing this kind of talent in this kind of an arena on the stream. Uh, this is exactly what this young man needs. The kind of seasoning and experience that they have to have. No. I love the way he parked his cue ball right in the middle. Pocketed the one as a pushes his ball to him as his next shot, the two. He lays nice and he'll be cut into the side, position for the three like he just pointed out. That's what I was thinking. He can get around and go for the three this way. Here we go. Now the four ball is going to be. Well, actually, he got just. No, he didn't. He wants to be underneath that four on the left side. He's going to see if the four passed in the left side pocket. It's a very tiny thing, guys. Pretty much the only option from this angle, though. Huh? Take it around the two rails and play it in the other side pocket. A lot of cue ball movement, though. A lot of. You have to end up in a pretty small area there. On the side, we'll be able to follow through here. Strong start from John Lynn. Second shot clock here. We'll get his extension. He's about six two, six six two, six three. Put that extension on when you're not you can reach almost anywhere. Oh, he's just perfect here. Nice angle to come down for the nine. Just have to avoid getting straight in here. So you can run the cue ball. Do about where the side pocket is you like, Eric? From the nine to the ten? Yeah. Yeah, see how nicely he does that? See if he uses the second rail. I would. I like using the second rail there. Yeah, I always use some running spin mm -hmm. if you can. In this case, right spin is running spin. Could stun that ball, but playing natural as much as you can, using the spin to move towards the angle is always a good play. And for game number three of that ten ball. And 3-0 in a race to four. Uh, I would call that a commanding lead, especially that he has the break. 
and the break that we've seen so far has been very controlled and uh, a good one. Well, the women's tournament, uh, Las Vegas Open, Medalla Light, Rums of Puerto Rico, starts tomorrow. They'll both end on the 24th. On the 25th, we have the mixed doubles uh, tournament with the eight pairs of the best men and women players. And then on the 27th, we start two tournaments, the Predator WPA World 10-Ball Championship and the Women's Showdown. The first one of this, 16 of the top women players in the WPBA. $100,000 prize fund in that one for, for all 16 players to, to get off of. I think first place is $25,000. Well, folks, uh, we're going to get nice and cozy in the booth. We were just informed that our mics aren't working, so we're going to both use the same microphone. So I get to sit right up close and comfortable to yeah, Eric here. We're back here. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll modify what we have to. We've had a few technical difficulties, and we'll get them all worked out. Gentlemen, going to go offense here. Going to take the cue ball off the side rail. Cubo is playing decently over towards the two. Right there. Is this so? This is good right here. Okay. I guess we don't have to get that close and personal here. But uh, big, big shot down the rail. Nice position for the two ball. Will he get behind the seven? He's close. No, he's okay. He can pocket okay. the. Yeah, he can pocket this ball. It's pretty thin. He's gonna have to draw out of a scratch here. He's got to bring the cue ball either to where it's at now, right? Actually, he's got the nice angle to do that. Just a little inside here. Go between the four and the seven. Looks like the angle might actually be leading before the corner pocket. Yeah. He's called the two in the side, so he's going to play something offensive here. Yeah. Nice Inside play. English. Yeah, perfect. Between the four and seven. Main part of that was missing the four coming off two rails, and he checked it a little bit to avoid the four. Very nice play there. The runouts are just more intricate in ten ball. You know, when the balls end up, the balls end up in the middle of the table a lot more. Have to maneuver around balls that are in the middle of the table. In nine ball, it seems like the middle of the table is open more. Just offers you a lot more kind of straightforward position. But it's good to see the cue ball manipulation from these top players. And John Lin looking very good in this first set. This, he's up 3 nothing at the moment. Race to four. Best of three sets. 
If the match is tied at one set each after first two sets, it'll go to a shootout to decide the winner. Drawing angle's playing a little bit into the seven here. Ideally, he'd be want to be want to come back to either side of it. He's kind of taking a second look. Can play different parts of the pocket to avoid the seven. He's actually going a little bit more to the left than what it appeared, so he should be okay here. That's where I thought he was going to go with that. Yeah. I just wasn't sure if he had enough angle to really. Uh, move the ball that far. Yeah, I had to put a bunch of speed yes, into it because he was on small angle and managed it well. Didn't give McBride really much chance in this first set, as you would expect. One break and run overall. And keep in mind that since he lost the lag, he will be breaking first in the second set once he puts this 10 ball down. And down he goes. First set goes to Junling Chang. Okay, guys, we're going to go to a short break here. We'll be back with you soon. And I thought we were going to take a short break, but no, folks, you're stuck with us here. We're going to go right through and play right through. Referee is uh, racking the balls for us. And we'll get underway shortly. And set number two, Chang Zhong Lin from Chinese Taipei to break the second set, leading one set to zero. Another little discrepancy here? Yeah, it's Chang Just a break. question. Yeah. Just a question. Breaking from the side. A lot of the players break from the middle, but when, they, when they're hand racking the balls, they like breaking from the side. This cue ball is not as good as he was doing earlier. He was breaking from the middle earlier, didn't he? he first set he broke from the yeah. side rail. Hit, okay. yeah, hit, hit them very well every break. Not, not quite as well on that one. One didn't come off the rack how he wanted. So it's going to be, this is a tough look for McBride, but really his best look of the match. He can power follow the cue ball across here, play the two in the bottom right corner pocket, bottom left corner pocket. in between bridge here. Nice look at McBride's grip there, very loose grip. Didn't quite get over as far as he wanted. Gonna be an option to draw the cue ball below the seven here. Ideally you wanna look not to draw safes. All the safes with a follow don't seem to be lining up to where he really wants, though. So I, I think if you try to draw below the three here, you can use the seven to stop the cue ball as well. Tried that, just caught the wrong angle a little bit. Caught a window between the six, eight as well. Just depends on how much of the two Jun Lin can see here. Can definitely hit it. I'm gonna be looking at certain parts of it. We're gonna be able to play safe.
Yeah, I just didn't quite have enough of the, the right angle on the two to get it going up table. Had to run it into the eight, and McBride's going to have a good chance here. Biggest question is whether the three passes the four. You know what's funny about these uh, short races is a lot of times when you get skunked in the first one, you seem to find opportunities in the second one. And that's what leads to the shootouts. This would be so exciting for, uh, for Payne to be able to come through if he can here and turn this around and, and force uh, Chang into a shootout. Yeah, and for a player like McBride, you know, he'll, he'll be more nervous in the first few games than he would in the second set. He has enough experience that once he's settled in, he's definitely capable of doing something similar, playing as well as John Lin did in the first set, and he'll have to to, now, to beat so, uh, him. I would, I would much rather have the cue ball to the left of where it's at now so I could play the uh, billiard on the four. Can he see the three ball? No, he tried yeah, the combo on the four. Yeah. It's always deceiving when the ball you're, yeah. you're playing a combo with is so close to the ball you're comboing into. You really have to cut the ball more than it, than it seems. It's, it's almost like a visual. Uh, you have to consciously think to overcut it a little bit. Yeah. Because otherwise you hit it thick. The ball's just got to cut so quickly. Look how clean he hits that. He just contacts the ball so well. Yeah. He could, if he could kind of stay there for the for the five, he'll like it. He can also draw over to play the five to the uh, same side corner pocket. Yeah, I, I like trying to get better on it. I mean, he has to he has to decide how much room he really has between the six eight. Maybe come into the ten with it. Yeah, like that. Perfect nice shot. Yeah. Cue ball's tracking to the left enough that he's going to get the cue ball in a similar area here to come back for the seven. And he's playing well. Pinpoint cue ball position pretty much whenever he needs to. Staying in line well. Two rails back into the angle here. Maybe one all the way up to the short rail. A good look at those predator balls. Six. He got a little too straight here. Oh, uh, no, he's got enough angle. Yeah, a little bit of left spin will bring him up table. He might choose to elevate on, and stay on the same side of the table as the seven. But definitely straighter than he would like. Now, on a shot like this, Eric, do you like going ahead and following the eight ball straight into the corner and playing the nine ball uh, to the short side or bringing the cue ball back for the nine? In the upper yeah, I mean, you always want to favor the shorter pocket. I, mm -hmm. I think I think the key here is getting close to the eight and seeing what kind of options you have when you get close to the eight with the cue ball. It's kind of in between here. Still options to get out of it. It's a little funny angle, and you can see a little bit of concern on his face there. He can take this three rails forward down to where he's pointing his cue right now. Bit of left spin. Stun him left. underneath the 10. Oh, he went, short side. he went short side to it. Yeah. He, oh, tough shot here. Guess he thought he could draw it enough. That shot with the inside going around three rails is just a shot that doesn't come up that often. And, it's, and I think it's because it's not routine, it's missed more often. So he just decided to avoid it there. Big shot right here. Nice shot. Used the whole pocket, but it went in. Looking good through that shot. Well, McBride's going to have to get going on his next offensive chance at the table because Junlin's playing very well. Hasn't had many chances, but did have one in that rack where he could have took advantage. And Junlin takes the first game of the second set here. Won the first set 4-0. Singles just starting in the amateur events over on the far side of the room. 
We have about three ballrooms full, full of tables here, George. Well, we only have about 340 tables, <laughs> foot tables. Wow. And yes, there's three ballrooms full. There's, uh, I think it was uh, pretty close to 1,339 teams. Wow. Uh, close to 7,000 players running through these ballrooms and all these tables. The corridors, uh, getting back to the, to the tournament room here. And uh, they can walk by the players, ask for autographs, take pictures with them. What an ideal, ideal place to you know interact with top players in the world. And they're all so approachable and so nice. I just wouldn't approach them when they just finished losing the match, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give them a little space, a little time. Give them 10 minutes to cool off. John Lin sticking with the same spot on all six of his breaks so far. Chang is a Predator sponsored player. Thus, thus plays with their equipment. Former World Ten Ball champion. Didn't make one on this break. Always tough to push when the one's so close to the corner pocket. Could be considering pushing into a jump here. Nice thing for McBride is the three's tied up with a nine. sure about that one because the two so easy to play position on that it didn't really matter if you left any kind of pocketing angle on the one he'll always have a shot on the two but again he's just putting him in a spot where if he does make the one it's going to be hard for John Lin to get the proper angle on the two to break out the three nine Closer to it, so looks like he might have something creative back at the three. He's on too much angle to draw directly back into it. Gonna have to make a quick decision here under the shot clock. Not quite where he wants to be right now. He, he didn't have much else, but I think he even himself knew that he the two was too close to the rail with too much angle to really draw back at that. Would you consider a three foul here, trying to three foul and get another foul? Yeah, I get guess. Get the ball up against the three and try to get the cue ball up by the five? Yeah, if you cut the three to the, the three left. Three. Yeah. Oh, he's, I see what he's doing. He's going to, yeah, he's playing the cue ball up to the five. I kind of like trying to bury the three a little more. I kind of like trying to bury the cue ball behind the seven using two rails to get there. Uh, he was able to, yeah, he was able to bury the three enough. That's a good shot. Well, John Lynn could come up with a creative jump here. Too tough. Just thinking if he jumped off the short rail with right spin, he could get into the three, but there is a two rail option. That, that 10 ball is dangerously close to getting in his way. Should be able to get underneath the 10. Yeah. Nice oh, hit. Shot. Nice hit. Look how close he came to the 10. But of course he hit the right side of the 3. If he's going for the left side, he would have had more room. So he's at a danger for the 3 foul. Did leave McBride an offensive chance here. Going to have to pay, play a big power draw over to the right long rail. See, he's pumping up here. Going to put a big stroke on this ball. Tough shot. I like McBride's demeanor. He hasn't mm -hmm. showed too much emotion. He just nope. takes the table as it is. It's been put in tough spots by Jun Lin. 
came up with a favorable roll to get behind the nine. Yeah, yeah he's still in this rack here. Looks like John Lynn's going to have to draw out this ball a little bit, tighten up the angle. Cue ball's naturally going a little wide into the eight. If you draw it, you can make the angle a little longer. Nice hit there. Looks like he's going to leave the three unless it gets behind the four. Believe he has it. Hit it. If you, the trick here is to be able to stop the cue ball there and take that three ball, three rails, up by the five. Yeah. Can he, does he, he has the angle for it, but the, does the pocket allow him to get that three ball out of the vicinity? Yeah, his body language is saying that he can't make it. Yeah. So he's, he's thinking about just getting into it. Oh, he did call it. Oh, pardon me, he called it in the three rails around the corner, the five maybe. Yeah, see, if he, if he digs into it, he can't hold the cue ball there. Well, I was thinking about going forward if he was able yeah. to do that. Well, he tried to well, he tried throw to, it he in. He tried to pocket it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, trying to stop the cue ball behind the four there over that much distance is, is tough as well. Yeah, it was. It was very tough. If you're going to try to throw that ball in, though, I just like hitting it with a little less speed. He tried to keep the speed down. Just a little less. Would have threw it a little more. John Lynn back in control here. Watch out for the six. Oh Ball's going to check oh off the boy. second rail. And this is the role, I mean, he can still kick this in, but this is the role that McBride needed. I mean, I, if he doesn't kick it right in the pocket, I would, I'd consider him a pretty big underdog to get safe. So we'll see. I if thought it, he was going to try to come up above the six, not underneath the six. Yeah, I just caught some check off the second rail there. Oh, past it, yeah. yeah. I kicked it right in. <laughs> nice shot. Well, when in doubt. Yeah. Just... Fireman. It's a huge skill overall, recovery shots in general. You know, they, oh. no, no one's good enough to stay perfect all the time, and it's not like he's going to kick that ball in all the time, but, you know, having enough knowledge to give himself a good chance at that or any kind of recovery shots in general, the top players in the world do that really well. It's amazing how often they kick to the right side of the ball, play the ball safe, end up the re-safe, and kick him in just like he just did there mm -hmm. into a full ball too that's mm -hmm. tough to do yeah it really is probably go back and forth and stay on the same line for the seven. Oh, oh missed wow. it. first the eight. first ball missed by john lynn of the match mcbride's gonna have to slow roll this one in but i would say definitely his best chance of the match so far First real opening he's had. One of the first. Nicely played, little on the thin side of the pocket. So he got a little more energy out of the cue ball than he wanted. Does need an angle to come back for the nine though, so he's lying pretty good here. Probably come down for the nine, uh, for the side or just Stay up on top. I don't mind the side. Okay. Cue ball's playing naturally. Just sure. play a slight bit of left. Might even be able to get there with straight high. Just favor the nine into the shorter pocket here, I think. Good shot. He's going to put his first game on the board here. John Lin won the first set 4-0. He's up 2-0 in this set. So, a 
McBride needed this one badly, and he'll be breaking in the fourth rack of the second set here. Has good timing in his stroke. Mm -hmm. Definitely lots he, of potential going forward. He hits the ball pretty well. Watched a little bit of his match uh, against Kurt Kobayashi. He won that two sets to zero, straight sets. See, he's got a fair bit of sponsorship on his shirt as well. Good to see the company's getting behind the junior players. I mean, they're the future of the game. His mother and father usually travel with him when he comes to uh, a lot of the events. Nice. My dad always traveled with me when I was younger, too. This is McBride's first break of the match besides the first game the of the first set. Yes, yeah. Going with the breaking from the same spot as John Lin is. Solid break. Looks dry though. Yeah, good movement. Didn't make one though. It sounded uh, kind of uh, a little funny to it. It didn't have that big whack sound to it. Yeah, he hit it closer to yeah. like 60% speed. Yeah. Could be a bit of nerves there. Just wanting to go for cue ball control a little more than power. John Lin's in pretty good line here. Yep, the three ball goes. and. Uh, Past that nine, by that nine, looks like he, he did it just right to get there, too. He got just the angle he needed on the two. Probably be playing the six in the long pocket, but that's fine. It's a nice natural position from the five in the bottom left corner pocket. He'll choose to go below this ball, make the line a little more diagonal towards the five. Cue ball just moves more naturally when you're taking a diagonal line with the cue ball instead of kind of like a straight line off the short rail. Is he coming down for the five in the side? I think the five passes the eight. Oh, it so, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't think it went by. Yeah. So I thought he have to come back right by the eight. Oh, plenty of room. Yeah. It makes the game look easy. Just having a look. A couple of shots longer than he'd want to be, further away than he'd want to be. Cue ball's kind of playing into the point here, so he'll probably stun out of the angle, take a little more distance on the seven. I'm playing with this, this with some right spin. Got to be careful here, you're on the rail. Going to swerve the cue ball a bit. Seven's nice and close to the pocket, though. Shouldn't throw too much. Two rails around here, back into the angle. Ten ball uh, to take a two to one lead in the second set. 
some of the matches for going on. Some of the matches that just finished. Uh, Wojak Shevchak just defeated Eric Cantrell. Uh, Wojak is a 10 ball World Predator 10 ball champion that he won here in Las Vegas. Shane Van Boning defeated Hayato Hijikata. Two sets to zero. Uh, Vitali Patsura is playing uh, Donnie Mills, trailing by a set. Uh, Sharik Syed uh, leads Conrad Yushushin, two games to zero in the second set, but lost the first one. John Lynn up to break here. He has one break and run in the match so far. Hitting it well. I feel like he's a threat on every break he has. Didn't get one down here. Let's we'll see where the table ended up. Doesn't look like he has enough of the one to play the, cute, the one into the five. Play the cue ball behind the five, though. Looks like he's going to go offensive here. Kind of a kind of a two wave. He can get the cue ball going to the right enough. I feel like he's going to have to kind of stop the cue ball a little more. So a bit of an all-in bank here. I don't mind it though, you gotta take your chances when you got them against a world class player like this. Do you have a tendency of wanting to play a little more aggressive against world class players? Yeah. You know, guys that yeah. Hard to outmove them. Did you get behind the nine? Yeah, overall, the, the stronger the player you're playing, the more they can defend themselves too, right? So, you know, stuff like this where. He actually did leave him in kind of an awkward spot here, but say he left him a, a bit of the one where he, he could play uh, an easier safe. Players like John Lynn are going to get safe more often. So you kind of have to be more aggressive. Defended behind the ball, but didn't leave much at all. Yeah, left an edge. McBride will be playing the one over to the right, trying to track the cue ball back towards the seven. Five's kind of in the way of that path. Could play around the five. Going to have a lot of energy in the one uh, in the cue ball at that point, though. How about just banking it to the corner pocket and stopping the cue ball behind the nine? Could. It's another two-way-ish type shot. Yeah. He's going through a lot of thoughts in his head here. I think it's one of the first times in the match that we've seen either player take an extension. The match has been reasonably straightforward, but a lot of thinking to be done on this one. where uh, Zhuling Chang's height is going to pay off. He'll be able to reach this with his extension. Doesn't even have it on? No. Extension less. This is definitely a two-way here. Calling the one. If it doesn't, very good coverage. Look at this, though. Actually left it. 
He just didn't leave him a way to get back for position, so he's gonna have to go past the nine and take the cut on the two. Yeah, yeah there's a window between the six and nine there. Always tough to slow roll balls like this. Cue ball's too close to the rail to elevate. Just strictly potting here, stay down on the shot, cue the ball well. Shot. He was able to actually get it, hit it aggressively enough to go two rails past it. I like that play. Always target those longer shots with more speed if you can. Nice firm stroke. Got a little too much angle here, and he's limited to what he can do with the cue ball because he's on the rail. I feel like he might come up on top of the three to play the three in the same pocket. Kind of track the cue ball towards the nine. Took a gamble there, it didn't work out. Oh. You can kick this off the short rail with a bunch of right spin. Trying to send it over between the rail and the six ball. Yeah. And you can take advantage of those three balls that are up there. Yeah, ideally you have the, a shot with the nine as a blocker on the kick safe. Two rails at it. Tried to go two rails, caught it off the first rail. Not quite the result he was looking for. Got to put a big draw stroke on this on this shot to get the cue ball going past the side pocket. I feel like he can though. Cheat the inside of the pocket a little bit here. Nice shot. I mean, good line now. He was under a bit of threat in this set, being up 2 1 and McBride at the table. Back in control here. Shot down the line there. 100% focus from Jun Lin. Coming two rails over here. Killing the cue ball into position. Just noting to never play that shot ac across one rail unless it's too straight. Just wants to get the cue ball off the rail for the nine. And follow up for the ten. Winner of this match will have one more match to qualify for the final 32. Final 32 becomes stage one, correct? Or is it final 16? Single knockout at. Looks like they're doing the single knockout at, at the final 32. place it becomes a um, the the race changes a little bit the third they'll play a third and deciding uh, set and if the set is tied three games apiece then it goes to a shootout yeah less likelihood of a shootout in the redraw stage and the single elimination stage World 10 ball championships will be later in the week and that's how that's how it'll be from the beginning of the tournament. There'll be a best of three sets until the single knockout stage and then a best of five sets in the single knockout stage. Only going to a shootout if it goes hill hill in the in the deciding set. 
and that will be down to the final 16 since there's only 64 players in that one. Six had a chance. So McBride's gonna have one more chance here. Fortunately, the nine's blocking the most obvious pocket for the two. Gonna have to do a lot of cue ball movement here to get it back where he wants. Could choose to play the two nine combo. Safe options aren't really high percentage here. So I think he's going to try something offensive. Especially against a player like Chang. Yeah, he's got to take his chance here. I mean, the offensive positional tracks were tough, so he played a nice shot there. Chang in a pretty bad spot. He'll, he'll hit the ball. Kick safes are tough. Can come out at two rails. Try to hit the bottom side of the ball. Always got to be careful when you're kicking at a ball like this, like how far the ball really has to travel to hit a rail. And if you're trying to hit the bottom side of it, the cue, up, cue ball has to travel a long ways to hit a rail as well. Oh, shot clock got him a little bit there. Misjudged it. Came off sharp. So good decision from McBride. Definitely in a better spot than he was last time he was at the table. Rack's looking okay. One to the five, really the whole rack. Bit of draw from the seven nice to the here. eight, yeah. Yeah, from right here, getting on the two, going to the three, the four, just you just walk the cue ball yeah, to all, where you have to go. Yeah, all natural angles. Under hit this one a little bit, yes, though. Did. Got to the end of a shot clock, just didn't quite have the final preparation to get where he wanted there. And he's in the middle here. He might have to even go to the corner pocket just for position. Nice shot. Good recovery. Going to be left with the cue ball on the rail here. Not much to do with the cue ball. Can just stop it. Try to give yourself a little angle. Got a little straighter than he wanted, but he'll be able to get on the five. Just gonna be a little further from the five. An ideal position. Seven tens kind of in the way of his positional, where he wants to play position here. I like going forward on this one, especially considering how far the cue ball is from the five. Tough, tough to judge the exact amount of draw over this distance. Choose to draw it. I think he's coming into the 710 for that area so you can just pocket the six. It's a nicely controlled draw there. Probably trying to really run into the seven, which would have been fine as well. This young man is definitely not out of this match. Uh, 
Clearing these four balls will tie them up at two. Going to four and send it to a shootout. John Lynn is up 3-1 in this set, so it'll bring the score to 3-2. have 10 to 15 young junior American players that are really looking good for the future. We got this young man here, uh, Joey Tate's a good player. Uh, Adrian Prasad, who did well, very well in, uh, in Europe. I saw Adrian around the venue, I'm assuming he's playing in the Las Vegas Open as well. Nice recovery shot on the two. Stayed fairly in line after that. Nice rack here from McBride. He'll be breaking in rack number six. Trying to force a shootout here in the second set. They ain't looking good through that rack. Trailing, as you said, two to three. Going to have three more rounds of play for you guys today. Be around at 3.30, 6 o'clock, and 7.30. All men's Las Vegas Open action today. Women's Las Vegas Open gets going tomorrow. And later on in the week, the World Handball Championships and the PBS Women's Showdown. Some of the sponsors on the billboards, Kamui, Rums of Puerto Rico, Medaya Light. Nice hit there, popped the cue ball nicely. One's got a chance. Oh, that's no. a bad roll there, leaving the one right in position for John Lynn. John Lynn's going to have the first look at the finish line here. Three to the four is going to have to be played well. Two's in a nice position where he should get the angle he wants on the three. That's really the key shot in the rack. Probably have to play the five in the long pocket. Six could give him a little trouble here. Nice stroke there. Didn't want to catch the point going to the left off the one, especially with all that traffic blocking the two, so chose to draw straight out of it. Regardless of the result here for McBride, he's, he's seemed fairly calm throughout the match. Mm -hmm. I, I like I, I mentioned it once before, but I like his demeanor, you know, especially to be in a big spot like this with very little experience. A, a lot of players, you'll see a lot of emotion, a lot of, you know, kind of doubt-type body language, right? I didn't really see that from him. I think it bodes well for him going forward. Very mature player for his age. Try with this cue ball right towards the five there for position on the four. Oh, he went underneath it. Yeah, he got where he wanted here. <laughs> Only small downfall is he might be a little straight and a little further from the five than what he wants. He'll probably be able to cheat certain parts of the pocket to get a little closer. That was the key shot in the rack, though. All there for him now.
Didn't get quite where he wanted. I mean, there is going to be a track from taking the cue ball to the left side rail and then up table with some right spin. That's kind of leading into hitting the six, which could work out. And he's going to look for other options, which seem tougher to me. So I think he's just going to kind of risk running into the six or maybe try to manipulate the cue ball a little bit where he barely misses it. But the cue ball is definitely traveling towards the six here. He could power draw three rails as well. Tough shot, though. Oh, uh, yeah, that's... That ball comes back quite a ways. He's going around the nine. He's going to run into it. Going to get a shot, though. Nice shot. I mean, he knew he had to run into it there. Sure. Just no other options, really. A little stun shot for the side pocket, or is he going to go to the corner? I like the corner here. It's a little too much cut going towards the side. Very nice shot. Gonna try to get as straight as he can on the eight here to avoid any kind of contact with the ten, draw out of the angle. Showing that he's able to switch hands if he needs to. So if he uses that many extensions and he's able to switch hands, I don't think he ever needs to use the bridge. Obviously, there's got to be some spot on the table, but it's pretty rare. Yeah. He's played a good match here. Played really well in the first set. Didn't give McBride much of a chance. Really only one missed ball over the course of the two sets. So we'll look for Jun Lin to have a good week going forward here, and McBride will have to fight back on the loser's side. He's still in the tournament. He'll be playing down to a final 32 single elimination, so he'll have to win about three rounds to get back to that stage. John Lin will have to win one more. In advance to that. Well, it's been a pleasure being with you guys. For George Teachea, this is Eric Horlifson, and we'll see you back at 3.30. See you soon, folks.